quite an interesting week, a week where we have a lot of things happening. It's your favorite show. It's Let's Be Real. And as usual, the man who makes it. A lot Very of noise. <laughs> a lot of noise. Very Did not show up <laughs> last <laughs> weekend. Yes, I skyped a lesson. <laughs> I was but welcome back, Simon. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Nice seeing you. Nice I'm glad even you. we're matching today. We're on the same level, we're on the same wavelength. Red. Exactly. <laughs> All the way. Well, well so, <laughs> and on Maria, of course, I'm your host, CEO Charles Otieno. We are happy and we'll dig into deeper topics than usual. Mm -hmm. And with Simon and Maria. Wow. Yeah. wow, Simon, welcome back. Thank you so much. Hey, that was nice. You're finally kind to me. I'm always kind to you. Look at you. Okay. Uh, yeah, with that Fine. tone. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I am Maria Nyambane Waweru. I'm so happy to be here. I am really glad that you guys have been supporting us so much. And for everyone who is buying the book, Marriage is a Scam, thank you. Thank mm. you so much. And even asking questions about it, thank you. I really appreciate. I'm an author of two books, Marriage is a Scam and Love the Original You. I also do a kids magazine, The Young Magazine. Stay tuned. Stay yeah. tuned. Exactly. Hey, marriage is indeed a scam. That's why I'm not married. And I'm Simon <laughs> Says. <laughs> I create content that makes you smile and think. But most importantly, I'm going to say things that you're going to need to listen to because we're going to keep it real, every single one of us. So, so see you. Simon, yeah. you are Gen Z. I'm Just, millennial. Uh, uh, you are Gen Z. Now, now uh, I'm representing them. Yeah, I represent them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you well, got, yes. Yeah, and I, and I need to support them because here's the reason. Let yeah. me even talk about the, the first story. Let me start it off. Gen Zs have made it very clear. And millennials have made it very clear that indeed we are not bonging. What are we bonging with the government? What are we talking? <laughs> the government just wants dialogue. Yeah. They just want to exchange saliva. We don't want foreplay. Uh uh, we don't want any of that. <laughs> we want real action. We want real things that are actually tangible. Because this one thing that even that's wrong, even you saw the president met um, uh, Viola Odinga. They were there, you know, the dialogues in chief as we call them mm. they're there now they just want to now say that indeed it's time now to talk and actually be cordial and everything no and it's, was it 10 days of dialogue or six six days of dialogue yeah. jesus christ even gosh that's now you have all these days of wastage of saliva here's the thing let me just start with my point and i because i feel very passionate about this mm. number one mm. when it comes to dialogue for me, as I said previously, this is just an exchange of saliva. Mm. There is no ac action that's actually being done. And that's a point at which we want to pass. We want to pass now that stage of just talking because we always get stuck there. And it's time now for accountability to now come into play. And yes, we have heard the word accountability, but what does it actually look like? Accountability is when you, as people who have been put in places of power, people have been put in places who have been given power by the normal citizen to actually act. Accountability of actions. We want actions done now, enough talking. We have been talking for the longest time. The constitution is already set up and ready. You know that CEO, every single framework, we have very good things on paper. Nothing is done. Do your job, get things done. What are we doing talking with terrorists here who have just been terrorizing us with now more taxes? That's even how we feel like. Persecuted, pressed, and oppressed. We are done, we are tired. Talking with who? Oh. Hey, Simon, you're Ma indeed Simon. a Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Hey. Hey. It's, it's so, so powerful. It's like he is the one we're saying now. He is tired of talking. Yes, exactly. It's, it's true. Okay. This is just another power play whereby, you know, this, when anytime our dear, dear, dear Raila Odinga comes and shakes hands and then starts having a dialogue just so we can be fooled that ah now you see we've made peace everything is okay we can also calm down we will do everything you want but in real sense the only gen z's are asking for simple things one of them is the taxes the, yes finance bill was there now these people need taxes to go down these people need their lives to get better these people actually need jobs these people actually are the ones that are really struggling to even get the fee to even go to those school to schools that's what they they know what the demands they want but now as much as they know the demands they want let us remember one thing that the constitution states that an mp and an mp can be called off two years after election right remember all this while we've not had uh iebc mm -hmm. we've not had it but now the tax now it's why 
those are the questions why why you've survived for two years why i don't know if are they calling our bluff or they are sure that these people will not do it i think calling the bluff is the way to go or why don't the gen z's make the bold move and call off their mps because they can because it constitutionally two years later they should mm. now they have an electro uh, they have abc but will they be listened to? Will they be heard? Will the IEBC do, do, do the due diligence yes. and ensure that if this demands, this is what they demanded, and we are hoping that Gen Z's are not doing it out of spite, that you voted for the finance bill as my MP, I don't want you. I think it's, I hope they are doing it for, I need a better life, and I've realized that I voted for you, even if I wasn't admitting publicly that I voted for you, now I think it's time that I admit that I voted for you and I don't want you anymore. I wish you would, you would do that for the president too. Maybe coming out of spite is necessary. Yeah, <laughs> 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 coming out of spite is very necessary. But I, I don't think they should do it out of spite. I think they should do it for the right reasons. Like we don't need this MP because of A, B, C, D. Mm. Not because this person voted yes to the finance bill. Because we have bigger problems in this country right now. We have extreme problems. For me, I'm passionate about the fact that our healthcare system is collapsing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm also passionate about the fact that our education system, surely, surely, okay, I know this is out of topic, but what is really CBC? So, mm. so yeah. I, I think that, um, and I was telling you, Offset, that, mm. uh, you know, the, the, the our president, William Ruto, and uh, the 12th, 12th century leader of England called Canute have a lot of in common. So the Gen Z has just come to stop. The Gen Z is like a big wave who have come in to stop the, the, the misappropriation and the way the country is not well governed. Mm. And I think that the, the catalyst was the, the, the finance bill. And the finance bill was just the low hang, hanging fruit which they needed to deal with so that they see the other areas they can move to. And the government has reacted. And the reaction is they, rea they realized we had an ADCO report somewhere which they didn't want to pass for a very long time, which had stipulated how to select IEBC. And remember, the Gen Zs had put a clear guideline of what needed to be done. One of them was reconstitute the IEBC. Yeah. They said the number one was drop the finance bill. Number two, reconstitute the IEBC. Number three, prosecute all corrupt leaders. Finally, the last one is Ruto must go. go. Now, I think the Gen Z's uh, strategy is very clear. They're saying you must do one, two, three things. I do not find any problem with a constitution of IEBC. The only problem Gen Z and some of us have a problem with is why now are you bringing the opposition mm -hmm. who had already said, said these are the views we had collected this is w the structure we want IBC to look like. And then you are bringing them and it's a photo op. Yeah. It was basically a photo op of trying to defuse the tension to be seen that they have come together. There's no way, let me tell you, there are no two ways about it. Politicians, if uh, the government, this government is a Kenya Kwanzaa government. They have the sole responsibility of delivering the promises to the electorate. They have the sole responsibility to make sure that everyone, the way they promised in their bottom-up agenda, that the youth get up jobs, that the youth get proper education. So if they cannot perform, they should not tell us that they want a government where they bring opposition. The opposition's role is very clear. To check. To check and to keep the government and to uh, uh, also look at areas where they can correct. So if I see the moment they call each other and they come to the high table and agree, then I get very worried for this country because mm -hmm. everyone should do their job. The president's job is very clear. You should deliver. And the Gen Z are saying, after the IEBC, they go to the counties and ask, where is our money? And I, I always find it very funny that a governor is in court for 1.9 billion. Mm. He's stolen, and the, the courts still award him 250 million to repay. Yet a chicken thief in the village is in jail, is in jail for 20 years. Crazy chicken. 
because of a chicken. Hunger. I think the opposition. Hunger. The yes. opposition because we have right now is Gen Z. No. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the new opposition. There, that is the new opposition. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so I think that uh, William has to really, really, the president has to really, really dig deep into his uh, skills and realize that you cannot fool Kenyans. You can fool Kenyans once, mm -hmm. but not twice. You can fool us that with cosmetic changes, but not second time again. He has to, first of all, change his cabinet if he wants people to see him differently. And even one thing, even just to add on, what you will start to see is counter narratives yeah. now starting to shape up because now they have now started even, um, even you noticed even while I would even like backtrack some of these things saying that, yeah, okay, I have heard you. Even he tweeted out, I have heard the, that you guys don't also want even dialogue. He didn't say the way forward, he just said, I have heard you. Yes. Full stop. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And the main thing what you start even seeing is right now they're just structuring what narr narrative are we going to push out there to the people now to give them a sense of we are hearing what they're saying, but rather than actually we're doing what it is that we are actually elected to do. Mm. That's what you're seeing. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be that. That's all the structure that's going on behind the scenes. Mm. What do we tell these people to give them an impression to even now lure them in? Because what happens is even a lot of people who are lured in, there'll be some people who are lured in. There's some people from even Gen Z's who will be lured in yes, by one thing or another. Because you have to remember, corruption is alluring. It's not disdain. Corruption works very seductively. You know, the sister is like more or less like a woman. It just seductively seduces you in. It's like, ah, come in. No, hey, before even you say anything, take a cup of tea, you know, whatever. Ah, relax, you know, everything else. Like, now, yes, now, what was the thing that you wanted? Notice they start saying about things that you want. They start now dissembling one by one, mm -hmm. and then now to counter the narrative. And then out there behind your back, they now start saying, okay, this is now, you have seen that this uh, whole structure, they'll start saying that it's not even unified, and they don't, they'll start saying things like they don't know what they want. But now the and they'll start saying things like that. The worst thing is, mm. now because of that, will Gen Z's get to their end goal? You see, I, I think the Gen Z's are really structured, and I like the planning. Mm -hmm. Because they started with the reject finance bill. Yes. And they mm -hmm. were ready to go at any length. For that. For that. And yeah. it was done. Yeah. They said, number two, do what? We do not want, we want an IBC set up. Mm -hmm. You've seen the president has reacted. And also for the people who were uh, lost corrupt their lives. Yes. The key thing was the key people who lost their lives and accountability for those guys yes. who lost their lives. And we need people prosecuted for those guys who, who actually shot this. We have evidence. We have even brought you yes. evidence. So we need actual action taken against those people who actually now ha, committed Has the action been taken yet? You see, the, what happened is that investigations is not a very easy thing. It takes a bit of time. And it does not rest with one person. It rests with a court of law. And you know how a judiciary works. Oh, mm -hmm. It takes That's a bad. whole long time. It grinds slowly. And I'll give you a very good example. There's a gentleman who we saw shot in the, the past man, the man was in Kisumu some years back. And the guy, on camera, and the guy died. The policeman was arrested and taken to court. But the investigators switched the guns. You know, one of the reasons for you to be prosecuted mm. Mm. is that the bullet must match the gun. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it? Mm. So what they do, they switch the gun and the bullet. And the bullet did not match the gun. So and the guy was left scot free. Because lack of evidence. Lack of evidence. But I don't think Gen Z will be fooled about that because we have evidence. It is not Gen Z being fooled, Maria. So it is a court process. So meaning the Gen Zs will not achieve their end goal. The end goal is this. The end goal is yes. they want these people prosecuted. Yeah. We need them prosecuted for what they did. We need the corrupt leaders mm. to be held accountable. But here's the thing. But, yeah. okay, and the final one, we mm. we, Ruto must go. Mm. Now, will they get the justice for their friends? Here's the thing. Because we know justice in Kenya is... Uh, slow. Here, here. Slow uh -huh. and... Corrupt. Very corrupt because the people who are in jail, mm. listen to the stories. People who are scot free are the ones who are supposed to be. Listen to the stories. I don't, one thing you have to realize is this. With every movement, mm. the outcome will always come so much later. Okay. That's the truth. The actual outcome will always come so much later. But, so the the one thing this is outcome will come on the next elections in the ballot? Not even next elections. It will come out in the sense that mm -hmm. 
leaders are now on their toes people are aware yes you know Level that and now. we now know that indeed as kenyans our road does not stop at the ballot it doesn't it doesn't stop at the it ballot doesn't. it's it's a continuous process in which we always need to put pressure on our leaders our leaders do not need to know peace for what <laughs> they don't need to know peace. No, the country needs they don't to need peace, to know no. peace. No, it's true, are they? <laughs> Our leaders do not need to know peace. Leaders always need to be on edge. That's why every good functioning government is a heavy, well, well structured opposition that keeps the government in, in check. check. Yeah. And if that opposition is lacking, guess what we do? We step up because we feel oppressed. And when a leader is always not at peace, corruption settles in and entitlement settles in. I think, I think I think as we move on, I think uh, what the Gen Z should do is also they may, should make sure that MPs who are elected in a party do not cross over to the government side. Mm. Because what the government has been doing for a very long time is that they buy a few MPs so that every motion in mm. parliament is passed easily. Mm. Then the uh, rubber stamp, the, uh, uh, this parliament has become a rubber stamp of the executive, mm. which is a problem. If we had proper leaders of MPs who are following the party mm. and following the wishes of the people, mm. then we would have not reached where we've reached today. So the movement continues, right? Yeah, the movement continues. And so does this show, but we'll be right back after this break, okay? Keep it locked right here on Let's Be Real. Woo. It's had been very, very, very hot inside here. Gen Z, drama, Gen Z revolution continues. and simon millennial continues with it <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, maria bring us to the next topic actually the next topic is also very deep mm -hmm. yes uh as you all know i am a proud born and bred kissy okay mm -hmm. i was born in nairobi but i'm a kissy mm -hmm. and if there's one thing i know for sure is that uh we tend to have anger like we get angry no you don't tend to have you are just angry people <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we get angry. But that, that's a fact. It's mm -hmm. true. We get angry. And speaking from uh, even myself, mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm, as I grow older, I learn how to control myself. I'm we not angry all the time. I'm never angry with you, Simon. Look at this. So let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> so a chief somewhere, a parent somewhere decides that, okay, now I'm not going to discipline my child. I'm going to call the chief to discipline my child for me. Remember, we are in 2024, whereby we don't have the same traditional children we had before. Now we have modern kids, whereby us versus our children is totally different. Now this child, after being caned, she committed suicide. Now, Simon, before I come to you, because mm -hmm. you are not a parent yet, <laughs> CEO. Mm -hmm. Gentle parenting, positive discipline, corporal punishment, there are so many we you can see, talk it, about. It depends with uh, where you come from. And of yeah. course, you see, when you say modern parenting is Nairobi parenting, hmm. I, I want us to always be very clear on where these things can apply. In the city, yes, because people have seen have a proper way of communication and doing things. But people who are born in the villages, where you have to walk for five kilometers to go get water, to fetch water, to get firewood, to... People live very hard lives. And to more of such is that a lot of people are expected, and kids are expected, to really, really work. And that's why this child labor in such areas, in, in the villages. People go to farms, people go do this. So I think this is an isolated case. Because I know if you go to the villages, modernity is not uniform. It has never been uniform. If you go to where, like in the rural Kisi, the rural Nyanza, the rural Kikuyu land or Kamba land. Even some urban. People have a way how they treat their children, how mm. they, they uh, bring them up. And structurally, if a kid, and I will tell you in a village setup, if a kid does not follow the rules, the biggest thing they do is to take them to the chief. Because the chief is the one who really uh, deals with, with uh, such issues in the, in the villages. Mm -hmm. I think the parent was very right to take the kid to the chief. Very, very right, because mm -hmm. that's a channel uh -huh. which they use. But the, kid, the parent needed to know whether the kid had a mental issue. Because for you to commit suicide, 
there must be an underlying issue we, for the kid inside there. And <sighs> as, as parents, myself as a parent, mm. I don't entertain nonsense with kids at all. I get you. Yes. Here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the biggest issue I have against that. Yeah. Parents who parent their kids the same way that they were parented are very foolish. And here's what I mean. You are foolish because you are assuming that the child takes in information the same way you do. That's a lack of understanding of your own child. And parents who parent the kids the same way have also a prejudice in the sense that the kids should live and, and actually come out the same way I did. And now that's even worse because you as a parent, you're not wishing better for your kid based on even how you're raising them. And here's what I mean. You have set certain structures and everything. And you know, remember how even your parents even used to, your dad even used to beat you, your, your mom even used to even say, oh, unataka kuniua. You know, you know all those things. And then you're repeating the same thing. Why were parents saying, oh, unataka kuniua? Guilty. They want to guilt you to take an action. Thinking that this is the, west, the best way to actually train and raise a child. You as a parent now, you're supposed to do better because you are better. If you are doing the same, you are stagnant in growth. And that's why even I'm saying, taking out the kid to the chief and then now giving it as an excuse that the parent had which which end. That means that that parent had actually not actually even now grown even as an individual to reach the point where they're able to communicate with their child and actually see, this is something I can solve and keep it in-house and yes, I've reached what? Wit's end. In the sense that my wits as a parent have come to an end. I have not even gone beyond. Yes, it's true. You have not gone beyond your own ability to think. You know, you know. So now you've gone to your, your last resort. Simon. As you have said, last resort is chief. Simon. And then the chief beats now the child to death. <laughs> no, in the, to the extent that even the child is now even. So who's lacking? The parent is lacking. And it's okay to put the blame on the parent. Simon, you're, it's talking, very you're talking from... Uh hypothetical no it's true no, no 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 my parents raised me differently than they were raised no you're, you're talking but from hypothetical that beating is okay point mm -hmm. of view yeah okay uh, but let me hear your perspective <laughs> let me, okay let you me see, hear it let me hear it parenting is not a candy uh, shop where you go and pick there are bad days and there are good days that happens yeah isn't it yeah mm. and number two why i'm saying you're talking from hypothetical point of view is that uh, you are looking as if this thing you know the whole story. Mm -hmm. You're assuming that this kid who died, it's because sh she was beaten. No, it's other issues. There are other issues. That the parent did not Now, see. let me tell you. Simon, yeah. you'll be a parent, and, yes. you have, uh, and I don't pray for your kids to come out badly. Uh, some of them may. It and one of them probably is a thief, uh -huh. and is killing people and comes to your home and robs you and beats you up. Nah. Huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. There's ways to handle what it. will you do? See, there ways to handle it. Yeah, well, what how? do you do? See, oh, physically. Oh. physically. You're old, you no, don't have no, energy. No, no. Here's the thing, here's the thing. No, it's my job as a parent yeah. to note such behaviors even early enough. Okay. And correct it. And, and no, no, no. Because what you have to realize mm. is a lot of the time, what happens is that kids were beaten without understanding the why. Kids were just beaten because you did something wrong, full stop, or because you, did not, you have to obey the rule of order, the parent is above you, and you don't ever uh, actually question it. When a kid understands that indeed I did this, and now I'm getting, it equates me to this punishment, cool. But when a kid lacks understanding, she, he views it as cruelty. And then when you see view it as cruelty, that's when you now you see now someone actually now taking their own lives. Okay, Simon, let me, let me, let me, let me disagree and agree with you while disagreeing and agreeing with CEO. First of all, when I was a parent, when before I became a parent, I was all for you know kids are going to be raised differently. Yes, of I course. was all by there. I used I'll never touch my children. There I was no, beaten. I was yeah. beaten when growing up. Yes, and if I wasn't beaten, right now I look at my parents and I tell them thank you for everything you did, mm -hmm. because if they didn't beat me, I wouldn't have turned out to be who I am right now. This or how I am. Own. Good. Now, can I tell you something? Yeah. And there are things that they corrected not once, mm -hmm. not twice, not thrice. Because they are, as usual, we have, children have a way to outsmart, to, to outsmart you. Yeah. And we, right now, they have technology, company, and all that. 
I am all for parents, and I don't judge parents on the choice they make on how they raise their children. Mm -hmm. But remember one thing, my parents would have comfortably taken me to my grandmother and left me there to stay because they knew they could trust me to stay with my grandmother. How many kids right now, their grandmothers would accept to stay with them? And mm -hmm. I'm talking about grandmothers. Mm -hmm. They would be like, no, kila mtu wakai kwao. Parents right now, are say, grandparents are saying that right now. Why? Because we've chosen that, and this mental health issues on children. Mm. Actually, I know many people might disagree with me. Mm. There are serious cases, but there are others that come with being childish and stupid. So how do you correct that? So this is what happens. When you tell yourself that my child understands communication, and I am speaking from the point of view of I have two sons, mm -hmm. and their personalities are totally different. You parent each differently. Yes, you parent each differently. Exactly. But that doesn't mean that sometimes they won't all of them get on your nerve and then you're like, I cannot tolerate this, this and stand your ground. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that I don't see them outsmart me and go to their father and now act as if I was the bad one while trying to correct them. <laughs> yes, they have. You been. see? Yeah. So uh, while they grow, these characters become solid and solid and now they improve new things, they increase new things. I keep looking at my five-year-old and then I'm asking myself, a few months ago, the way you are speaking is not the way you are speaking right now. Mm. These things grow on children. And if you don't correct them, the right you don't you have to be tough on these children. And I am all I always say that for those who are doing gentle parenting and it's working, good job. But not every child will get to that level of gentle parenting. And I'm not going I'm saying I'm not saying that the way I was parented is wrong. I am going to be foolish if I'm going to parent my children differently. Let me tell you, Simon, if that is what is going to make my boys turn into responsible men, mm. I will do it and I will keep doing it and I will not stop. I agree with you 100%. And you see Jesus, the SEA saying it's not tolerating nothing. Yeah, I, I don't. I see him kissing. I can't. I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> the thing is, I'm not telling you guys to tolerate nonsense. I'm telling you guys to be more efficient in the way that you deliver discipline. And we have. Yeah. By the way. Is, and that's what I'm saying. And we. Being more efficient in discipline means that you don't have to incorporate you know, I hear outside people like Simon. the chief. Have you ever gone to, have you gone to the chief with your child? No. Why? Because you have actually understood your Listen, child and Simon. you actually know. This person who took the chief, that Simon. means that they actually are not actually competent. If a Simon. chief is going They're to help my Simon. child not to kill someone, but you have not week, reached that I stage. Call the Why chief? have you not reached that stage? Because, because Simon, these, these, are, these are different no setups, eh? Yeah, it's but I, 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 I understand. And I told setups, you, yeah. I told you from the word begin from the beginning yeah. that villages are different from city setups. Yes. And people, and I will tell you. When the discussion we are having with you today mm. will be totally different when you love your kids. That one I understand. Totally. I know I'll be disciplined. I know I'll be very disciplined. Because you I will hold sit down and you look <laughs> I know. and that kid growing up and you see what he's trying to do. Yeah. And then you remember, oh, so this is what my father would see in me. Mm. Yeah. You'd and understand. You, you will understand. You, you will try and your best to correct Only that, the best way. Mm. Some people have mental issues which you do not know. And in the villages, the way we are parenting in town is not the way they are parented at home. Mm. We ca it cannot be the same. You, you have lights, you have yeah. electricity, yeah. you have TV, you have... Those guys don't have. I get you. Even if, even, uh, even in the village, even there's different standards, even I'm sure then. Yes. Because even their, their grandparents were also very strict, even there's a way they even used to be beaten as if you're almost being flogged. And also even the Bible is very clear. What? Spare the road and spoil the child. child. I don't have an issue with, be with beating. I have an issue with beating without actually then helping the child understand why you're being beaten. Can I tell you something? That's the only reason I have an mm -hmm. issue with. And that's now where it becomes better and better. I am, I am a believer of if you cannot discipline your child, keep your brats at home. Actually, that's, I, I say that openly. If you cannot discipline your child, mm. keep your brats at home. Because these are the people that are going to mix up with kids that have been disciplined and coming to bring. Like, we have to be in uniform in trying to change the society, all of us. No. We have to be. We don't have to be in uniform because people have different perspectives. You will have different perspectives, and then you want me to tolerate you? your... Like, let me give no, you... No, you don't tolerate. Let you me, have to tolerate other people. Let me, let me give you a good example. Yeah. One day, I'm in church, okay? Mm. Then a child comes and starts screaming, throwing themselves around, pushing even the innocent people who are listening to the word and the chairs and everything. Mm. In my head, I'm parenting. like, in, oh, in my head, I'm like, if this was my child, I wouldn't have gotten to this point. And now the parent is there saying that, a chana na ye ye, a ni asira tu ninja. Do you know? Do you know what I did? Mm. I wanted to tell the woman, please kindly. All these people are here to listen. If this child cannot even listen to you, they cannot listen to all of us. Mm. Carry your child. Outside. Outside. Mm. So if you can't discipline your children, keep your brats at home. Don't bring them to us. 
Because for us, we need children who are well-disciplined around us. Exactly. And, some and if right now I bring my son here and he's misbehaving mm. on you guys, mm. I will discipline my child then, then because I need that child to have a good character in private and in public. Do the right thing even when no one is watching. That's true. Even that shows that even some people are not mm. valid enough, even grown up enough to even have kids. So yes. stop having irresponsible. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. Hey, I'm good CEO. What is this PhD <laughs> nonsense that's going on? <laughs> Some people are not responsible to have parents. No, parents. it's okay. I think parenting is a very difficult journey. It's difficult, but that's why I'm difficult not there. That's why I'm not there. Journey, uh, but you'll get there. I always yeah. tell parents, spare the road. Spoil, spoil the journey. But sometimes it's a sweet thing. It's a very amazing journey. Uh, but now let's move on to the next topic. Uh, yes. Well, this week, um, the most interesting thing is that uh, the average age of Kenyans who are pursuing PhD are in the 60s and 70s. You but in the West, <laughs> I'm, eight, I'm 90. <laughs> but in the West, the people who pursue PhDs are about 28 and mm. below. So what do you think is this? Something even I want to add on to this CEO is this. Um, a different perspective is sometimes a lot of these institutions, be it even locally, even Western, mm. they are they are what you call it uh, loyal to an ideology mm. and then what happens is this especially even in western countries what you may notice is this you may bring a thesis statement that now goes against the ideology that they may have within that uh, particular society uh, for example, a friend of mine was in Vermont, and then he was actually doing his PhD, and he did a, a topic that was against a certain um, uh, belief that they have in, they're very liberal in, in the state. So that brought him major issues for him to actually complete it. Now come to Kenya. When you are now in Kenya, the, uh, it will come in the sense of, you know, you, even if you're young and you don't even, they have a, like an ageist kind of thing. You're not a certain age to have uh, push against our way of thinking. Like what qualifies you, Simon, to even speak out against me? What qualifies, there's that um, ageist mentality for the elders have against maybe a, someone who's even younger. So what happens is, if you're not able to conform to your supervisor, even the way that even um, he guides you and everything, through his mindset, because when you're doing a PhD, you're now coming up with your own uh, articles and you actually now have a structured mind. You're above masters. You know what I mean? Now you're actually out there now litigating and giving out information based on research and based on your own findings and everything. You have done work, but you must do it streamlined to a certain ideology that now the supervisor has. And a lot of times what happens is through this ideology that's suppressed on you as an individual, you are now limited even in thought and in an expression. So that what leads to this is what? A narrow-minded bank full of old mindsets that just come out with PhDs. And now the only people who are appreciated are there, you know, the age, the people who are younger than you, the 50s and 60s. And then now those guys are the ones who now go there because they can relate to that mindset. Yes, we agree that indeed this is the way that we need to go and this is the mindset that we need to have. These are the studies that we need to go. This is the way to study it. This is, we, sh we should not incorporate this new AI or new technology within our study because this has not been proven by so and so forth. No, we should not study crypto because crypto has not been integrated by the uh, certain, um, um, what you call it, uh, governing bodies that we hold in as high standards, but those infrastructures are so empty and they're not even servicing the public in the proper way. Yes. That's what really happens in actual PhDs. That's literally what leads to a cocooned mindset of the stagnation of the same mindset because they deem that their current situation should actually, the status quo should actually be maintained. So that's literally one big issue leads to now this. So now me as a young guy, now I want to pursue my PhD and I see this nonsense. Why? And then you can also even go the economic way, can't you? Okay. Let me put a family perspective into it. Yes, because same when you, you've put a development technology perspective <laughs> into it. Let me put a family perspective into it. If you look at people who are graduating with their degrees, and I'm talking about, um, okay, I've, I'll subtract from that medicine and law, mm -hmm. and then take the other ones, the BCOMs, the IT, the journalism, the, all these other degrees, and then you go to master's. Now, at this level, at this age, you're in your 20s. Then, employment, that is when it happens best, actually. A lot of people are employed. If you look at most of the requirements for hiring, most of them clearly state 35 and below. 
if you're going for the normal positions. Then now, uh, if you are na at that age now, that is when you are setting your base to have a family most mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And remember, in Kenya, the school starting age of a child is three years. Is it three or four? It's three years. Okay. Yeah. In uh, the States, at nine months, one year, your child can go to school. School or just uh, kindergarten. kindergarten? Yes, yes because, kindergarten, yes, yes. but understand they don't have, they do, they, most of them don't afford nannies. It's preschool. Yes, yes, they do preschool. Yeah, in Kenya, no one can take your child at nine months mm -hmm. or one year. You have to praise that child to three years. Suffering from nannies, the turnover of nannies, it's really hard. If you are a guy, you're providing for that new family, so you need a job. An eight to five for anyone, and then family at the end of the day, Maybe you can try and sustain masters, but even that one will stretch. But now PhD, that focus will be really difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's add on to the point that our country right now is suffering. Okay, it's been suffering for a while, but right now it's worse. <laughs> so if you look at your pay slip and the school fees of PhD, you feel sorry for yourself. So what do you do? Am I investing, going for PhD, raising a small family, or at least trying to survive? That's another issue. So you find that if you wanted to do PhD, you'll pull it, you'll hold off a mm -hmm. little bit. So a man who is in his 50, a woman who is in their, who is, who is in their 50s, can easily pursue a PhD. Let me tell you why. Your kids are grown, right? They're gone. They're gone. You don't want to be idle. You're almost retiring. What do you do? Let me engage my mind then. A PhD in this country has become, let me achieve all the dreams I had. It's not, let me get a PhD to help me somewhere. Mm. Unlike in other countries whereby a PhD is a qualification for a job. In this country, it's not a qualification to be for a certain profession. It's an, a qualification, an academic qualifications. And that's why you become a lecturer after that. You go there to teach. You, become, you do other things mm. aside from the professional work of it. Yes. So it's the prob the issue of the country, the problems, and the and everything else that has to do with education. Because in real sense, it's expensive to pay PhD in this country. See, I, th I think you've you've captured it very well, Maria. It's, our problem is basically economical problem. People, it's not because people cannot get PhDs at 28. There are kids who are in this country at 28. They have their PhDs. It's about finances. Our schooling system vis-a-vis -vis the West is different. The West, you can you have your university education for free if you are a native. Mm. If you go to Germany, you go to Europe, America, you can have this education, scholarships and all these things. So you will engage your mind. You go for high school, you, graduate, you go to uh, undergraduate, you complete your master's smooth sailing and PhD. But the problem is that our economic model is totally different, the way Maria said. Most of the Kenyans who are pursuing education, you are trying to put food on your table, but you are also trying to better yourself academically. Then you have to make a decision, and you are also trying to raise a family, which are very difficult. But there's also another problem is that, and it has become a norm because when you, this thing continues like that, you, when you're getting money, you're a bit older. The professors who now get their PhD emeritus are always in their 70s and above because the pull up there is very small. Mm. So also supervising becomes difficult because you cannot have very many uh, people to supervise. You can only do maybe five per semester. The year you have 50 students who want to graduate. So that also elongates the time for these people to graduate. So it takes a lot of time. Our problem is if we had better education system where people are paid for masters and PhD or they take loan like uh, help, I can assure you that that age will definitely decrease, decrease immediately to 25. Because Kenyans are ex extremely intelligent and they would like to do, and even the professors will be more people to supervise the people who are coming up. Now, we don't have very many people to supervise and we have very few, and we have very many people who want those degrees, but all of them have to go after getting some money. For example, to do a master's will cost you how much? Maybe not less than three to five million? Yeah. Yeah? For two years, yes. For two years. A PhD will take you over 10 million. 
in Kenya today because yeah. you need research, you need to write papers, you yeah. need to do to travel yeah. and you need assistance to help you with data collection. So it needs a lot of finances. Yet the person is still the person who you are trying to better yourself at home, you want to build a home. It becomes very difficult. So I think that's our biggest problem. The government should step in to a, make more people uh, borrow money or they should give loans mm -hmm. the way they do. The help should be expanded for masters and PhD students so that we'll have quality, so that we can have more research. Because when you have more research uh, students in PhD level, you have a lot of inventions. But you know, CEO, the problem is, uh, the, if the government steps in for help, government, I'm not siding with you, uh, if the PhD is that expensive, mm. and someone who is, is going to graduate in their 70s, how is a 70-year-old going to We are saying that, if they, listen, when they come back, it means that the people who are doing their masters current now, they'll definitely proceed for masters. That Which age gap is. will be gone. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm just saying physically, you want to reduce that age calm down? Yeah. Just put loan there. These kids who are graduating so from the undergrads, they many people would like to register for PhD. Yeah. They yeah. don't have finances. They are in their twenties. They are even yeah, even like okay. for example, even my friend, even like people are being paid. Yeah. Do their PhDs by other countries. Yeah. You actually get paid. It's actually a work thing. Yeah. More or less. You actually are paid to do your PhD in other countries. Now here, you want to tell me now, I why would I when I waste my time paying for that ten why don't I just go, book a flight, go I'm to good. Germany, <laughs> and then now get my PhD there, which would be more valid and mm. more of use and more respected in that country. Mm. And come here, waste my time to struggling here to even yeah, what do you call it? Suck up to a supervisor because he has so many people and he needs. He has, he has, a, a, yeah, he has over fifty. Now he's, exactly, that can lead to now that. Stop encouraging us to go away. Uh, no, it's well. <laughs> hey, no, but we must confess <laughs> against it. We need to be around. And it's a trick or damn thing. Even <laughs> that comes back even to our top story <laughs> about how even we must hold our leaders accountable because we, we must. need we uh, must. what you call it, leadership was actually held accountable every single time. These things will not be an issue. Help would not be a big issue. Guys would be flowing through what you call it um, education very fluid in helps we have to having people when they leave education when they leave um, uh, university you're able to now get an income from that first job. But what happy? We'll conduce environment for business for who? You see, yeah. you see, I and I know you've, you might graduate in your twenties, then get your job in the, in your thirties. You know they're, 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 yes, and they're many, again. And there are many people who are doing courses they don't want because their parents don't have money. Yeah, there's that now. Yes. The education system in this country is what Because if you do not, for, for example, your kid must have been, wanted to be a doctor, mm -hmm. but if you look at the fee for a doctor, you mm -hmm. can a bachelor and a of philosophy. textbook. Mm. Textbooks of doctors. They are very that. expensive. Yeah. And, and mind you, your child has that dream. Imagine that. Yeah, that's... And, and that, this is a sign, even maybe this is a trickle-down effect of, of corruption, literally. Yeah. You know, yeah. we don't always even, like, maybe we need to discuss this later, but the trickle-down effect of corruption is real in your life, even you see it in education. So yeah, so forth. yeah many a, people are doing courses they didn't anticipate to do. Mm. That's for survival. Yeah. 90% who are qualified for those courses to drop out. And a rich man will take the kid to study medicine and pay. And away from this country. And away from this country. Straight you will take your kids. You go to another country. That's what they're yeah. paying you guys well. Go I, I, I think we should yeah. have a whole episode of how corruption trickles affects, down. trickles down to yeah. the last yeah. bit of it. Now that's just us yeah. keeping it real. So we kept it real. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I think we had a good one today, huh? ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Yes, we it's did. Been, it's yeah. been real. Exactly. Simon, we had missed you. Oh, but you. we are waiting okay, for you to have your kids. Yeah, where, now you see, that's another thing. I why don't you know why I'm waiting me? for that. You know that thing about parenting? You know you guys have even scared <laughs> no, me. No, 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 it's even, true. Uh, you know, wait, what was the first time when you beat your child the first time? Was yeah. that like a very big moment for you? No. It's, it's yeah, not a big moment. moment. The first time. No. Not the first time. The, There's nothing. You, you, you are just feel, correcting someone. You feel someone. proud seeing their, them change. <laughs> and, <laughs> Actually, me, me, the, the, the words that got to me was, Mommy, I will never do that again. I'm sorry I offended you. Yes, they Those are the best And some of them, they know. They know. Yes. Yeah, most and of actually, kids right know. now, I hear him tell his brother, don't do that, mommy will beat you. Uh, and also, yes. some of them just want to push to see what, how he'll react. How he'll react. Oh, kids are there just to push your boundaries. Yeah, yeah. to see. Ah, 
They no have one, to explore. No wonder when you become a parent, you age more rapidly. You see? <laughs> <laughs> Simon, hold it there. When you don't become a parent, actually, that's when you age. Eh? Yes. Now you think right so? now we are exercising our minds we so much. We are done. We are done. <laughs> <laughs> that's us keeping it. We'll see you next week. <laughs>